Good morning, evening, and everything in between. As you can see, what we're going to be talking about today is a uh, you know the big technical term, uh, structured text files. But what we're really looking for is what we call a CSV file or comma separated values. The entire idea is. You know, in the past, we've seen this same kind of diagram in class. The entire idea is how do I represent uh, data in a way that I can uh, process it? And okay, well, you know, what we've done in the uh, past is we've said, oh, well, I could take uh, each one of the rows inside of the table and I could uh, store them in a list. And then I could store that list inside of another list, making a nested list. And so I've got multi dimensional uh, lists going on, uh, which is crazy. Uh, but what if I wanted to take that same idea? I want to take the same thing, but maybe I'm not at the point where I want to process that uh, data in my program just yet. Uh, and that's the entire idea is maybe I want to take that same kind of idea of storing the data uh, separated and put it into a file. And that's exactly what a CSV file is, comma separated values. I basically take every single one of those cells that were, uh, you know, individual cells of the table, and I'm just separating them on a new line uh, representing a row, and then every value or each cell is being separated by a comma. Now, with this in mind, we talk about this as something known as the delimiter. The entire idea is, well, maybe I what if I have uh, some data or some information that I, I want to be storing that contains a comma? Uh, say, for example, we were building a giant CSV that had uh, you know, the author's name, uh, the title of the book, and literally the entire contents of that book. Most books have commas. I'm going to be almost certain on that. Uh, now, the entire idea is maybe I, I can't use, uh, in this case, a, uh, a comma to separate the values because it's in there. Well, the entire idea to the delimiter is that could be anything. So in this case, I'm using the pound sign or the hashtag uh, for all of you kids out there on the Internet. Uh, anyways, the entire idea is I take some symbol that I'm not using in my data and say, well, I'm going to use this to separate my data. And so again, this is the idea of the pound sign. You could use the percent sign. There's a, a, a straight line on your keyboard. Uh, you got to hold shift to get to. It's called a pipe. You could use the pipe. You could use anything you want. So now that I have this data, how could I maybe process it? Or maybe I've got a file that I'm working off of. In this case, say, for example, uh, I have a, an iris.csv file that I'm working off of. It's inside of my data folder this time around. So iris.csv. Okay, fine. Now, if we think about that, okay, well, I know where it is. I could go through and I could do the same process that I've always done. I could open the file for the line. And then since I, you know, again, it's a comma separated, so I do a split on uh, a comma. That would work. That's perfectly fine. It doesn't uh, do anything crazy. Just as a quick refresher, you can also use the with version of this. But what we're really looking for now is this idea, well, it's a CSV file. And uh, Python happens to have a CSV module specifically designed for handling uh, CSV files. So if I came in, and again, I've got that iris file. This is what it looks like. Uh, the entire idea to this is it's a, an, a sample data set, uh, very commonly used uh, when you're practicing and playing around and learning uh, about how to manipulate data. Uh, and it's just got a few different column headers. So say, for example, we've got, uh, roughly speaking, uh, I think it's 150 uh, different flowers uh, of different species. Uh, so for example, the first one is Setosa. Uh, I'm gonna butcher these names, so if I'm doing that, I'm going to butcher these names. I'm going to butcher these names. That one, uh, ver, Versilicolor, and Virginica. That one's easy. Uh, okay, so I've got all of this data, and again, I've got uh, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, 
petal width, and again the species, and each one of those uh, data points is separated by a comma and their floating point value. So again, like I said, I have the Python's CSV module that I can work off of. And so again, I'm gonna uh, just work off of good habits. So I'll come in and say with open, with open, there we are. Now again, uh, just to put it all in there. Now again, I have uh, my temp file. My temp file happens to be inside of core, right? Again, uh, so I need to jump up a directory. And to do that, I use the dot dots. Uh, and then I do a slash and the slash is just saying, oh, well, you know, from a parent directory or from a, a directory up, now uh, I need to go into my data uh, directory. And again, I have the iris.csv file, and I'm just gonna again call that phi. Now I still haven't really done anything with the CSV file just yet. I've only, I've just opened the file. That's where the idea of the reader comes into play. And I like to use the uh, variable reader. Again, that's what pretty much every resource online will also use, or some variation of like your reading, uh, mostly because to turn our file from just a, a file into sort of being processed as a CSV file, csv.reader. Now in this case, I'll come in and I'll pass it in the phi. Uh, so in this case, I'll just go in and for row uh, in reader, print, row and then i'll go ahead and just break again break is just to mean to stop completely uh, and then move on with the rest of your code so if i run this exactly what we would expect i'm looking at the first line of my iris.csv file and in that first line is all of the values and it's done all of the parsing and separating it uh, into all of the individual elements inside of a list. So sepal length and sepal width are uh, separate, and then petal length, petal width, and species are uh, as well. So I keep on going with this, but maybe uh, just for our sake, because this is my uh, column header, uh, while it's great, um, we'll be using it a, a little bit, I don't want to actually uh, work off of it right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna just come in and say skip first row equals false. Now, what this is for is this is to uh, skip over my first row. Uh, so if not, oh, actually that needs to go above the for loop. There we are. If not, skip first row. If I have not skipped the first row, make skip first row true. The entire idea here is, oh, well, I see the first row again. Uh, the only thing that I have in my first row are the column headers, and they're not the data. I can't do any analysis on the data uh, with that. And then I'm going to do just one more command. Continue. Again, uh, the continue keyword, just as a refresher, basically says, uh, stop what you're doing in this iteration, go ahead and move on to the next iteration. Just go ahead and move ahead. Please continue. From there, maybe I wanna do some just quick little uh, analysis. I wanna say, for example, uh, just see what all the species are. Well, again, if we look at this row, when we printed it, printed everything in a list. And if it's a list, that means we can access it via all of the uh, indices that are in that list. So in our case, uh, species is at zero, one, two, three, four. Species at row four, so print row at four. And what we should see is a long string of, in our case, uh, Virginica, because that was uh, the last entries, and then we get to the one I, I really can't pronounce, and then Satosis. Awesome. But maybe I want to go one step further, right? Uh, maybe I want to do, I want to find out what the uh, average Satosa flower looks like. Well, to do that, I'm going to create what I like to call a running total. So uh, in our case, I'm going to do a little cheating. Not cheating. If it's work that you've already 
built. And in this case, I'm just going to do some quick copy or deleting. There we are. Oh, I don't need species. And I'll just come in and do a total sepal length, total sepal width, total petal length, and total petal width. Each one of those are going to start out at zero uh, at the beginning, because again, we're dealing with a running total, so I haven't added anything quite yet. The next little bit is I'm going to do that same paste and that same kind of approach here, but now, again, since I know all of the locations of all of the data points, right? Uh, sepal length will be at uh, index zero, width will be at uh, index uh, one, two, three, four. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna save each one of those at it as a variable. So again, one, two, three, and four. From here, again, like I said, I want to deal with maybe uh, for our sake, uh, the average, what does the average uh, Satosa uh, look like? So, okay, all right. Uh, now that I've saved the species, I can use that as a variable. So if species uh, equals Satosa, oh, all right, well, then I'll take my uh, total value uh, variables that I've been working off of, and let me actually just increase this so I have a lot of working room and paste them. Now I'm not just going to set them to uh, zero. I am going to uh, do some plus equaling specifically on the other variables that I've saved. So simple length, width, length, width. So in this case, uh, float simple length and I'll just go ahead and Copy out those. Now your hand-eye coordination, as you notice, that's, it just, you gotta practice that. It was a lot of copy and pasting and then clicking and double clicking a lot of things. Uh, just as if you didn't know that, you can double click on something and get it, copy, paste it. So it's a really uh, great tool. But the other thing I need to know is how many, uh, of Satosa's war there. As of right now, I don't know. And so I'm going to go ahead and also make a count variable, set it equal to zero. And every time I see a Satosa, I'll go ahead and just do a plus equals one. Fantastic. Because now, once I'm done with all of this processing, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of the uh, processing phase. And what I mean by that is I'm not going to be tabbed inward. I'm going to go ahead and be tabbed out. Remember, uh, while we have a file open, uh, if things happen, if it gets corrupt or something of that nature, you know, we run into some slight problems. So we really want to be, uh, when we're done processing a file, immediately close it back up. So in our case, now that I've done all of this process, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come in here. And I'll go ahead and cheat with this. Total, all of these will be switched over to AVG, uh, short for average. And then, uh, let's see, that'll be total sepal, total width, and boom, divided by counts. So now that I've gone through all of that, I can do a printout of each one of those. And in our case, I'll just do a quick one, nothing terribly crazy, but there, oh, there. I think they added the spacing because I added the inners inside of the space. And so what I should see when I print this is, I should see the, uh, sepal length is roughly about uh, f five, I guess, inches or centimeters. Uh, I'd have to double check on the data set. Uh, sepal width is about 3.4, give or take almost. Uh, petal length is about a 1.5, and then the petal width is a uh, almost about a quarter. So there you are.